Hey, yo, dude, what's going on? What's going on, guys? So, uh, welcome to a long-awaited updated guide, um, pet coughing guide, 2.0, whatever you want to call it. Just a revised version of the last one. So if you haven't watched my previous pet guides, mainly uh, the pets in 2022 and how to read a pet's talent pool, uh, you should probably go watch those. So this content here will make sense. So copying a pet is sort of on the easier side of making pets. So I'll try to keep this video as short as possible. Subscribe to me, please. There are basically three steps to copying a pet. Step one, making the base a 420 base. Step two, transferring the pool. And step three, self hatching or mega hatching with the original pet. And all these steps are pretty self-explanatory. So uh, let's get right into it. All right, so the first step, making the base. The pet you should be making is a 2.020 pedigree base or a 420 pet with an all common talent pool. As previously mentioned in my last video, wow factor only affects the return rate of getting a pet back. So rarity does not matter. And when I talk about wow factor in this video, I am strictly talking about body return rates. Wow Factor has nothing to do with how good a pet's cards are or extra stats it gives. As for the pet type that you should make this on, you should make it on a school hamster. All school hamsters are a Wow Factor 9, besides the Ravenwood hamster, which is Wow Factor 7, so they are nearly the best Wow Factor for trying to get the other person's pet type back. If you don't want to make it on a hamster, I would recommend a Beguiled Gargoyle since there are already some in the kiosk and those have a wow factor of 10, which is the very best. I would argue that having a hamster is better since it's an exclusive body, meaning that whenever someone hatches with your hamster, they cannot get it back unless they are hatching with the hamster themselves. Also, if you are self-hatching a hamster, make sure it's on the left side because you have a 0% chance of getting it back if it's on the right side. Which is why having a hamster plays a role in making custom pools since you can easily transfer the pools off of the hamster if you put it on the right. So if you don't care for that, then you can make it on a beguiled gargoyle. Besides that, having the talents all common makes it extremely easy to see what talents have transferred. The 2.0 stats means that you don't have to mess around with stats if you only hatch with 2.0 pets, meaning it's one less variable to worry about. The lower pedigree means that you also get cheaper hatches. And for those of you who keep asking, does it really matter if all the taunts are common? Uh, my answer is, uh, you should just stop complaining and uh, just let's copy it. Just, just copy the pet, you know. Um, hatching with the low pedigree is really cheap. You're not spending a lot of making of the pet. And it does help having it finished when you start to make custom pools. Since it'll be easier to tell what talents have transferred onto your pool. As for which pet you should start with to try to get the beguiled gargoyle. I would use the highest wow factor pet that you currently have. To check the wow factor of your pets, join the discord and use the frogfather bot command t question mark comp, then type the list of pet buddies that you currently have. The enchanted armament is a pretty common pet that most people have. It's a wow factor 9 which is very good to start off with, so if you have it, use it. If not, check the frogfather to see what you do have. If you want the hamster, you're of course gonna have to get the first gen from the decathlon to create your 420 because the hamster is exclusive. I have 420 hamsters, so if you need some lens, just hit me up on Discord. Some Faircord lenders also have some. Alright, step 2, transferring the pool. One thing I hate that people do is that once they get their 20 pedigree base pet, they only use that base pet to make their pets. If you have, let's say, a different pet with 5 out of 10 talents that you want in your final pool, it might be better to use that pet. Granted that it has max stats or close to it, and its body type isn't a pain to get rid of. <coughs> Blood bat. <coughs> Piggle. <laughs> Alright, so everyone knows the deal. You find your pet, blah blah blah. The kiosk sucks, so if you can find someone with a pet and avoid the kiosk, uh, please do so. And at this point, you should refer to my last pet video on how to read a pet's talent pool to see if the pet you're hatching with is actually decent. Or if you don't care about the pool, you don't have to. So, once you find your pet, you'll keep hatching until the talent pool is copied. You don't really have to copy it all the way if you know that all your talents you want are already in the pool and you don't care about that five other talents. I would just copy the entire pool just to make sure I have duplicate pools and it doesn't randomly lose a talent that I actually want on the pet. Yes, that's right. If you have two different mismatched pools, you can actually lose a talent that you want manifested, which is why you should copy the entire pool or just have duplicate pools. If the pet manifests a failed talent during transferring, just keep the pet and continue to hatch until the pool is transferred. Worrying about manifest while transferring is just going to waste your time and resources. Alright, step 3. Self-hatching or mega-hatching? Self-hatching. 
You should really only self hatch if you have to, like when no one else in the game has the pet, when you're making a super custom pet and whatnot. So if you still have access to the original pet, you should make a hatch with that instead of self hatching. And I'll probably put a timestamp on the screen where I start talking about mega hatching. To start self hatching, take your pet with the copied pool and make another one. If the pet isn't available, just take your last pet that was one talent off and hatch it until you have another copied pool. You should keep hatching and training until you have two bases with the five talents so you won't spread between them. It could be ancient and ancient, or ancient and adult. It doesn't matter as long as all five talents that you want are manifested between the two. I wouldn't make epic bases since I think you're just wasting XP at that point since you might as well just train the pet to mega. It's okay for your first base to look something like this, which has no talents you want manifested on the end pet. As long as you continue to hatch your adult bases together and keep training, you will eventually get the manifest that you want on your bases. Once you have your two bases, you should continue hatching them together and train the baby up to Mega. Trash it if it fails and just rehatch your bases and do the same thing until your pet succeeds at Mega. If you continue to have bad luck with the two bases, it's most likely that RNG just isn't working out for you. People will say that your pet has a sticky talent because it keeps failing. It may seem like that at first if your pet somehow keeps failing with the same talent. You'll feel angry, irritated, and annoyed that your pet keeps failing. You want to trash the pet and start over, and you do for some reason. You believe the rumors of the infamous sticky talent, and now you have wasted more resources to get your pet. My advice? Just keep hatching. There have been plenty of times that it feels like my pet will never succeed. That's because pets are mostly RNG. Yeah, the manifested talents on your base pet are more likely to manifest on offspring, but that doesn't mean your pet will manifest those talents. The odds of getting the other talents in the pool just don't magically disappear. You can still get them more often than you may like. Keep hatching. Keep training. Keep hatching. Keep training. Keep hatching. Keep training. Maybe it can, if you are willing to guide it, to nurture it, to believe in it. But how? How? I need your help, Master. No. You just need to believe. Uh, no, but seriously, if you really think your pet has a sticky talent, um, I can't believe I'm saying this, but, uh, you can take two offsprings from the two original bases and make them your two new bases. I don't usually follow this kind of thought process, but if you want to try it out, go ahead. I'm just here to try to give you as many different options so you can get your perfect pet. It's just that there's no solid data on sticky talents being a thing. Everyone you ask who believes in sticky talents just says it's from personal experience and doesn't have any data to back it up. Mega hatching. I 100% recommend this over self hatching if you still have access to the original pet you're copying. Self hatching is good, but why would you when there are servers like Ferricord where they have pet lenders that lend for free, which uh, you don't have to pay for lends like the people in GTP and Ravenwood community make you do. Once you get an adult pet with the copied pool and two talents manifested that you actually want on it, you're going to continue hatching with the mega pet. And then you'll train the baby up to mega. You trash it if it fails and just rehatch with the mega pet and do the same thing until your pet succeeds at mega. All right, well, that's uh, basically everything you need to know about copying a pet, um, which this video was only on copying a pet's talent pullover. In the next coming videos, I'll talk about how you can make your own custom pools. If you have any questions, comment it and I will try to answer it as soon as possible. Well, uh, yeah, if you enjoy this, subscribe, like, and whatever. I'll see you all in the next one. Um, do I say a compliment or like roast you guys? Uh, mm, you're hot, but I did your mom. Owned. If you still can't figure out how to make pets out there watching this, uh.